because when you were dating, you were infatuated. You were not in love. There's the difference. Because <laughs> when you're infatuated, every, nothing bothers you. And you're on the never ending phone conversation. Oh yeah, I love you too. Okay. Did you hang up? Oh, me neither. Oh, this must be true love. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you do not know true love. How many of you, I did this. I would travel, I would drive like 45 minutes just to see Kathy for 10 when we were dating. And in our 31 years of marriage, there are times I won't go in the kitchen if she's in there. Because <laughs> there's butcher knives in the kitchen. Because, you know, when you're dating, you're on your best behavior and everything, you know? And, and I, I really didn't know the, the differences that there were between men and women. Like, I, I grew up with a mom. I didn't have a dad growing up, and so my mother taught me things that my dad should have taught me. So for a long time, I used to throw a ball like this. <laughs> it's funny now, but I'm the third grade, man. And then I struggled with, you know, being a man. I thought, well, when I could grow a mustache, then I'll be a man. And then I realized my grandmother's got a mustache. <laughs> right? And so, there, there, you know, we had all these differences. And when we were dating and stuff, I, they didn't really manifest until, you know, we got married. Then all of a sudden it was like, man, I had no idea that women don't smell their underwear to see if they're clean. <laughs> That's a man thing. Because women know if they're on the floor, they're dirty. Men, we don't know. Can't tell by looking at them, they're always that color. You ask any guy in this room, you go, hey man, are those underwear clean? He'll walk over, pick them up. No. And they're not even mine, man. Golly, that's just... And ladies, if you're married, you know you, you've tried to throw your husband's underwear away and you know they were in the trash can and the next thing you know, they're back in their drawers. <laughs> you're like, what is, are they lucky? No, they're not, it's not a lucky pair or anything. See, it doesn't matter to us how many holes are in it as long as the elastic at the, sto at the top still works. <laughs> if it snaps back, doggone it, it's a pair. <laughs> Don't throw those away. Good morning. It's Wednesday, May 18th, 2022, and this is another edition of Cafe Devo. Coming to you almost live from First Congregational Church right here in the heart of beautiful downtown Duran, Michigan. I'm Pastor Steve Wood, hanging out here once again with my pal Bugsy. Looks like he's just flat out giving it up for today, doesn't it? I hope your Wednesday is going well. We're continuing to read this morning from the book, Truth for Life. It was written by Alistair Begg, copyright 2021, Good Book Company. Ruth, chapter 2, verse 10. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes, that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? Only a heart that knows it is unworthy of grace will be appropriately amazed by receiving it. Ruth was a hard worker. In many ways, as she gleaned for corn behind the workers in Boaz's field, she exemplified the Apostle Paul's later exhortation to the Thessalonians, aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. That's 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12. Despite being widowed in a foreign land with a widowed mother-in-law, Ruth did not sit around wallowing in self-pity and waiting for some dramatic intervention. Instead, she seized the opportunity at hand to go into the fields and glean leftovers in order to support herself and Naomi, her mother-in-law. She not only took responsibility to provide, but also approached her task 
which was filled with long hours and only a few breaks, with a strong, persistent work ethic. In all of these things, Ruth neither insisted on recognition nor felt she deserved favor. Instead of congratulating herself for her endeavors or taking credit for deciding to work in Boaz's field, she considered her labors to be nothing more than her duty. Therefore, when Boaz favored and blessed her, she responded with amazement and gratitude. She knew she was not entitled to anything from him and so received it as a gift. Humility and thankfulness sleep in the same bed. A thankless heart pairs with pride, but a humble heart will always be thankful. Boaz's favor and protection foreshadowed the eternal favor and protection that God offers us through Boaz's greater descendant, Jesus Christ. Like Ruth, we too can be humbled as we see echoes of our eternal story in her story. As Boaz offers Ruth food and water, we may see their faces transform into the faces of another man and woman, Jesus and a woman at a well in Samaria where the Son of God offered eternal water that would quench her spiritual thirst. That's in John chapter 4. Boaz satisfied Ruth's physical needs that day by allowing her to be fed. Christ satisfies our every need eternally. He is the living water and the bread of life for all of us. Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? The same question ought to be on our lips regularly. Lord Jesus, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should love me since I am a sinner? The answer is simple, grace. No matter what we may do for our families, our churches, and our Lord, we are only and ever favored by God through sheer grace on his part. You have no other standing, and you need no other standing. Because of God's gracious provision, you can sing on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sing. Let your heart sing today with amazement at the grace you have received. For further reading on this subject, check out Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. And I'll bless us, O Lord, we pray on this Wednesday. We're grateful for it, and we ask you to fill it with yourself. Guide our steps, guard our tongues, and watch over what we think. May we serve you well, Father. Bless us so that we can be a blessing, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, that's going to do it for us on this Wednesday edition of Cafe Devo. Before I go, I want to remind all of you that First Congregational Church goes live tonight with our Wednesday night live stream. It's the last one because school is letting out soon and we're going to take a break for the summer. So come join us as we wrap up our study of the book, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. Not really a Bible study, but Mr. Lewis did a great job at clarifying some of the essential Christian doctrines that are based on scripture. And so we invite you to come join us tonight at 7 p.m. right here on Facebook, or if you prefer over on Zoom, either way, we hope you can come and connect with us. For now, I'm Pastor Steve Wood signing off. God bless you, my friends. I love you all, and I'll see you tomorrow.